Oh, hey, didn't see you there. Too busy jamming out the tunes on my AirPods. <laughs> yeah, they, they tune out poor people noises, so I apologize if I didn't notice you. <laughs> just kidding. Okay, if you're pressed for time, I'm just gonna say it. These headphones are excellent, and there's only three real reasons you shouldn't buy them. If you want noise cancellation, if your ears don't fit, or if you're willing to wait a bit for AirPods 4 to come out. But if you want to hear my full thoughts after using them for over a year as my main headphones, then maybe stick around. Keep in mind though, I'm not an audiophile, so this review will focus more on the experience aspect of the headphones and the headphones from a more holistic perspective, like what it's like living with them, rather than the sound quality of the headphones. So first off, these headphones, they're great. I got them in early February last year to retire my old JLab Go Air Pops, which were like 25 bucks and actually really good value for their price. If you want me to make a review, drop a comment down below. But the AirPods, while they might not be a budget value product, they're probably the most refined wireless headphones experience available to consumers right now. And this applies to all AirPods, not just the AirPods 3 specifically. So what do you get when you buy these things? In the box, you get the AirPods themselves, a charging cable, and that's kind of it. No charging brick or anything, but I don't think AirPods have ever had a charging brick included with them. That's fine, except most people don't feel like spending 20 bucks on a USB-C charging brick. Thankfully, there are other ways you can charge the AirPods. The case? Well, it looks like dental floss, I'm gonna be completely honest. I actually had these named dental floss for a bit until I changed the name to a more appropriate one. But it's so slim and so comfortable in my pockets though, I basically exclusively wear jeans, as you can see, and the little inside coin pocket is the perfect spot for them to live. It's adorable. The AirPods fit snug as a bug in this pocket, just like it's grandpa the iPod Nano. Build quality wise, I don't know what to say really because I'm kind of torn. On one hand, I'm not a fan of how scratch prone the case is. There are so many micro scratches on this, and hours after unboxing these things, I had scratches. The case also seems to have kind of discolored from my dark jeans. Here are my friend's new AirPods 3, and here are mine. You can definitely see a difference. Do I care? Not really. It doesn't impact how the headphones work, but there are definitely downsides to using glossy white plastic to build an earbud case that is constantly being subjected to the elements. These are a pair of AirPods in their natural habitat. I made a habit of always placing my AirPods face up, with the hinge on the back always touching the table, so the front has fared a bit better than the back. I don't use a case with my AirPods because to be honest, I kind of like getting all the scratches and seeing all the aging as I use them, but my brother, for example, uses a case on his AirPods Pro and they look a lot better than my AirPods 3. So you're going to want to wrap it if you want maximum protection. Cosmetically, white glossy plastic isn't the best for holding up against the elements, but the build quality and actual durability is great. It doesn't feel like plastic at all. Honestly, it's almost kind of like Lego quality plastic. Like, like Lego plastic doesn't feel cheap either. Like, look, it's TARDIS. This is Dr. TARDIS. But yeah, it doesn't really feel like plastic at all, and it doesn't feel cheap. And probably the best thing about this case is the metal hinge. Right, there's a metal hinge on here. Apple understood that this would be a weak point because you're constantly opening and closing it, and so they took no chances. So, well done, Apple. And all the wear and tear to the case has been cosmetic, wireless charging, and wire charging still work like a charm. The AirPods themselves are glossy white plastic too, but they're not going to be exposed to the elements nearly as much since they're either going to be in your ear or in the case, so they fared quite well over the time I've had them. However, if you do drop them, they're quite prone to chipping and scratching. Mine are okay, but my brother's AirPods Pro have chipped because they've been dropped before. It might have been me. Also, if you do drop these AirPods, prepare for them to go flying everywhere. It's really annoying. Okay, that's weird. Normally they burst open and they fly everywhere. Yeah, that's more like it. So yeah, that's the build quality. It doesn't look new one year later, but it's still built as solid as day one. Oh yeah, and they're also somewhat water resistant. I think it's IPX4. They're not rated for complete submersion, but a little rain won't hurt them. The AirPods have these buttons on the side, these little click pads that are much better in my opinion than the touch controls of other wireless earbuds. These are really nice and intentional and you can't trigger them if you're trying to take them out or anything since they're force sensitive. And so you actually have to like pinch them for it to trigger as like a pause or a skip or whatever. You can't trigger them just by touching them. So that makes taking them in and out of your ears a breeze. They don't actually click, but the system makes a click sound and it does a pretty good job at tricking you into thinking you clicked an actual button. It's 2024 and AirPods are now gaslighting you. The AirPods themselves also have a microphone built into them for calls and stuff. Okay, so these are the AirPods 3 microphones, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, they're, they're the AirPods 3 microphones. Um, I don't think they're that great. I haven't actually listened to them before. But if you're going to be calling someone or if you're going to be like on, I don't know, Zoom, or if you're recording a voice memo or a podcast or something, then this is the microphone quality that you should expect from the hardware. 
It's probably not great though because it's Bluetooth, but yeah. While this review isn't focused on sound quality, I'll still give it a mention. They're pretty good and they sound alright, nothing too over the top. As Dankpods puts it, AirPods are pretty good for being baseline headphones. However, my friend tried these and he found the bass to be somewhat lacking and this was echoed in Reddit posts. It's because these don't create a proper seal since they don't have silicon ear tips, so bass is hard to achieve. Personally, that's a trade-off I'm willing to make for the sake of comfort. They also do get quite loud, but thankfully Apple does include a feature where if you're listening to headphones really loudly for an extended period of time, they'll warn you to turn your volume down. Because you know, selling earbuds to someone who can't hear is kind of a difficult task. I forgot to mention, these look like AirPods Pro when they're in your ear. Which means if you want to flex and make people think that you're richer than you actually are, then you should buy them because they look exactly like the more expensive ones. Anyways, let's talk about spatial audio. It's one of the big features that these AirPods have that Apple is pushing, but to be honest, it's not a huge deal. Definitely not something that could make or break the experience. I have it enabled for my iPhone and when I turn it off, it does feel a little more like I just have two left and right audio channels, whereas when I have it on, it feels a little more like wide, but the difference feels subtle for me. And I did have it off for a really long time when I first got these and I only turned them on like a couple months ago. And honestly, like it wasn't a huge deal. To be fair, I use Spotify, not Apple Music. On Apple Music, you get songs better tuned for spatial audio. I should mention that if you buy AirPods, Apple gives you a six month free trial for Apple Music, so that's pretty neat. I activated this trial a while ago, and again, spatial audio didn't make a huge difference in the listening experience. The sound stage in general is pretty incredible on these headphones though. I was listening to Sight of Your Tears for the first time while walking to the university around 2.33 when the guy yells, that part specifically plays in the left part of your headphones, and for a split second, I thought someone was actually yelling next to me, so I instinctively turned my head to look before I realized it was part of the song. Now, I did think this is impressive, and it kind of is, but then I grabbed the default wired Apple headphones, the ones you can buy right now for 20 bucks, and the ones that Apple used to give for free, and it had almost the same effect. Yeah, it's kind of similar. The AirPods are a bit better at creating the effect of a soundstage, and it goes beyond the feeling of just two stereo headphones. But if you did a blind test on me, I genuinely don't know if I'd be able to tell the difference. It's just something really subtle. I would not get these headphones purely for the soundstage and spatial audio, because quite frankly, they're overhyped. Let's also talk about the lack of a seal on these headphones. You can hear almost everything in your surroundings. For some people, this is a deal breaker, but for others, it's the primary reason to choose these headphones. I got these because I wanted to be able to listen to music without isolating myself from the surroundings, and kind of have these on for like everyday life and stuff. I also bike a lot, so it's important to be able to hear my surroundings. I've tried the AirPods Pro transparency mode, and they're incredible and almost boost my hearing like a hearing aid. However, it still feels like reality is being put through a filter. With these headphones, it doesn't feel like I'm stuffing something in my ear, rather it just feels like I'm resting them and kind of hooking them onto my ear. They don't feel as intrusive as the more expensive AirPods Pro. I've tried the AirPods Pro first gen, and they're honestly quite comfortable, even for me. And even though I don't like silicon ear tips, I still enjoy the AirPods Pro, but I still prefer the more open design of the AirPods 3. And of course, this means no noise cancellation for the AirPods 3, but I have have my Sony over ears for that and they provide noise cancellation as well as comfort. I love these. These are great. Now not having silicon ear tips does mean the fit isn't customizable, which is a bit sad. However, Apple tries to make their standard AirPods one size fits all, so they should fit you alright and they fit my ears fine, but if you have friends with AirPods 3s, maybe try them on and make sure they fit, unless you find sharing earbuds disgusting. And if worse comes to worst, you can always return them to Apple. Please clean them before you do that though. Let's talk battery life. Battery life on these things is pretty good. Apple claims 6 hours for each ear. I haven't measured these scientifically with a timer or anything, but I have worn them for hours at a time and they generally don't die. I rarely wear earbuds for 6 hours at a time and putting them in the case for 5 minutes charges them for around an hour of listening time. Which honestly is fine because I don't think you should be having AirPods in your ears for 6 hours at a time. It's also really easy to check the battery level for the eye. Well, where did that accent come from? Battery level? It's also really easy to check the battery level for the AirPods themselves on Apple devices. However, checking the battery level for the case is a little finicky. At times. As for charging, well, Lightning is still garbage. But if you don't like this hole, thankfully the AirPods 3 supports wireless charging and MagSafe, so we actually don't need to carry around cables at all. If I'm out and about, I just need to bring my MagSafe power bank with me, no cables or anything, and if I need to juice up the AirPods, I just plop them down on the charger. It's pretty awesome. Of course, not all of us need wireless charging, so Apple sells the Lightning only AirPods 3 version with no MagSafe support, and it costs $10 less. In my opinion, unless you know for sure that you're not going to use wireless charging, it's not really worth it to save the $10 and lose on wireless charging and MagSafe, so make sure you're buying the proper version of the AirPods that you want. 
Personally, I rarely even use lightning to charge these earbuds, but overall, battery life is pretty good on these AirPods and charging, while it does use lightning, it redeems itself through the convenience of MagSafe. And of course, the biggest reason I chose to buy these AirPods instead of our channel sponsor, Raycon. I'm just kidding, I'm too small for them to sponsor. But yeah, the biggest reason I chose to buy these AirPods is because of the Apple experience. Seamless pairing with every Apple device is incredible. being able to share audio from one iPhone to two pairs of AirPods. That's incredible. Like any pair of AirPods, pairing and setup is easy peasy on any device and device switching generally works pretty well. If you're playing music on your Mac and switch to your iPad to watch some YouTube, it'll switch to the iPad automatically. Hey well, guys, welcome to today's video where I will be showing you the top five most comfy seats in the Jedi Council chamber. However, it can be a bit finicky. Sometimes they'll switch around randomly. Once I was listening to music on my phone and it randomly went to my Mac, but that doesn't happen often. And you can always manually pair it by taking out the AirPods and going to the Bluetooth menu to select the output. Another cool bit of Apple magic is the in-ear detection. These things actually have a nose that smells your skin because none of you shower, and then when you take it out, it no longer smells the stinkiness, so it stops playing. I'm just kidding, that's not how they work. But they do have a skin sensor built inside of them, so if you take an AirPod out of your ear, say, to talk to someone, the music stops just like that. Put it back in and it'll start playing again. It's really cool and it's another little quality of life detail that you can come to appreciate. If you don't want this feature, of course, you can toggle it off in the settings. Unlike most Bluetooth headphones, you don't need to download an app for the AirPods. Everything is within the Apple settings app itself, where you can rename your headphones, customize call controls, and do a whole bunch of stuff. There's also Find My built into the AirPods, although the case itself does not sync into Find My. So if you lose just the case, you're out of luck. Call Apple support or buy a new case. If you lose a single AirPod though, you can locate it using the Find My app and play a sound. It's similar but not identical to AirTags. For example, with AirTags, you can use the Find My app to point you towards the AirTags, but you don't get as precise of a system with AirPods. These only tell you if you're getting closer. You can also play a sound through the AirPods, but if they're in the case, you're probably not gonna hear them. Once, I forgot to take my AirPods from my jeans and left them in the washing machine, and they were about to drown, just like how I'll be drowning in debt from university next year, so I'd love it if you'd subscribe to support my channel and kind of mitigate that. Anyways, I realized I lost them, and through the finicky little Find My app, I was able to eventually locate them in my pants in the machine. So, because of this feature, I saved my AirPods from a watery death. However, another time I lost them and found them in my bed sheets, and that time Find My didn't really help at all. So, it's a cool feature, but not something that's necessarily reliable. Overall, these are some excellent daily driver headphones and I've used them as my main headphones since early 2023. Even in late 2023 when I got these Sony headphones, after a while I found myself reverting to the AirPods again simply because they're convenient. You don't need to download an app, you don't need to play around with funky Bluetooth menus, and quality of life things like auto pause when you take the AirPods out of your ear as well as the easy pairing make them pretty awesome. Furthermore, these are one of the only options in the wireless earbud market that don't have silicon ear tips other than the beans from Samsung. And they're really comfortable for me just because of how non-invasive they are compared to jamming a silicon nugget in your ear. These are kind of old at this point, they released in late 2021, so they're like two and a half years old at this point, so if you can wait a little longer, you probably should since Apple's bound to release the 4th gen at some point. I wouldn't recommend buying these at full price. However, I see these on sale quite frequently. Pretty sure Costco had them on sale at one point. And yeah, actually they were on sale when I was filming this video. Here is the price tag in my Canadian Costco that shows the AirPods to on sale. So if you do find them on sale, rest assured in knowing that these headphones should serve you well as a daily driver. Anyways, that's it for this video. Thank you for watching till the end. If you enjoy tech content and stuff like this, then consider subscribing. It would really help the channel out. And like I said before, university debt. Anyways, be awesome and stay techy. And it costs ten dollar less. And it costs ten dollar less. Um, what the Sigma? Oh, pfft. Super Mario time! Wahoo! Once I forgot. To, once I forgot. To, once I forgot. 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 Once I forgot to take my AirPods from my jeans and left them in the washing machine, and they were about to drown. I've heard from the car crash scene um, where I get hit by a. Get hit by a. Uh, I get by a car. This is gonna be like a two second scene, but I'm gonna put quite a bit of effort into it. It's gonna be really fun.
Hey, you should subscribe.